スーパーランダムジャパン。なに The second season and series in general of Tokyo Vice has come to an end, I think, and I can't recommend this series enough. From the impressive improvement of Baby Driver's Hansel Elgert's Japanese to the slew of compelling and complex characters all involved in the iconic backdrop of Japan at the turn of the century and the inner workings of its dark underworld. This is as good as mafia shows get from beginning to end. The story is based on a book by the same name, written by Jake Adelstein, the protagonist of this. True story. I say true, but I'm not sure how many liberties the show took as I never read the book. Plus, like most stories based on real ones, you need to take liberties to keep the audience in constant suspense. This show does just that though. I already loved the first season, and the second keeps the tempo going just as much, if not more, even with more episodes. In fact, I wasn't really happy with how the first season ended, but they more than made up for it soon into the second season and kept going. Plus, it wrapped up everything in a relatively satisfying way, with more hits than misses. Again, if it is based on real life, then you surely can't please everyone. However, in my opinion, you will not be disappointed. Critics seem to feel that the acting was somewhat flat, but I disagree. I don't think they understand the subtlety of Japanese language and mannerisms. It's one of the things that shows like Blue Eye Samurai and movies like Tokyo Drift get wrong, as it doesn't feel Japanese often because characters have so much emotion. While shows like the new Shogun series go to great lengths to showing the seriousness and honor with which Japanese people approach daily life while holding emotion back. Everything in Tokyo Vice seemed completely accurate and compelling to me. It makes it especially entertaining when characters like Sato use sarcasm and crack smiles since that isn't really a Japanese thing. Sure, they laugh and smile, but they don't usually do sarcasm well. It shows he's willing to adapt to other people. The same goes for Samantha, who does it in the other direction of Western adapting to Japanese. She's more muted than Jake, as she's more used to interacting with Japanese people on an intimate basis. In fact, Jake is the most animated of the series, but that's because he's playing an energetic American, not fully integrated with the way Japanese do things, especially on the bureaucratic level. So, in my opinion, the cast are all phenomenal. It's saying a lot when the most famous people, like Ken Watanabe, Rinko Kikuchi, and Ansel Elgert, don't outshine the rest of the cast. I was particularly impressed with the acting of Sho Kasumatsu. Even without the strongest English, he nails emotion and attitude far better than most fluent English speaking Japanese. Actors and actresses. Whether speaking English or Japanese, his screen presence was extremely impressive. The rest of the cast is great too, with no weak points. Shun Sugata and Ayumi Tanida play perfect rival Yakuza crime bosses. Rinko Kikuchi is as good as ever as Emmy, the lead journalist and Adelstein's boss, showing the difficulty of a woman with power in the 90s in a country that still is male dominated to this day. Rachel Keller is convincing as a strong Western woman as well. Well, while not being the stereotypical strong female character of the modern era, as she still struggles, like Kikuchi's character Emmy, in the very male dominated 90s Japan. She's just stronger in attitude than Emmy's, since most Western women have always been that way compared to Japanese women. The other reporters and newspaper staff are also perfect compliments to Adelstein and Emmy. You can really feel their rapport. This adds to the intensity of the story, almost as if they're another Gumi or family, much like the Yakuza themselves. The fact that all this takes place at the very beginning of the century is also crucial. It's subtle but important. This is before the fall of the Yakuza in the following and recent decades. It's not peak Yakuza era, like the 70s and 80s, but it's still relevant to see their inner workings. It's also nostalgic to me, as it's close enough to the time I spent in Japan in the early 2000s. Also, while most people might not notice, the main actor, Ansel Elgert, though not overly impressive at Japanese in the first season, in other words, he's not enough to become the first foreign journalist at a major Japanese newspaper, but he's still Impressive enough considering how quickly he needed to learn his role in a very short time for the sake of the show. By the end of the second season, however, his Japanese is noticeably better and much more convincing of a fluent Japanese speaker. I have massive respect for that. No knocking Rachel Keller, but she stayed pretty consistently so so throughout the series. I'm not one to talk though, as I'm far from native in my Japanese ability. She still does a great job in her role. 
Regardless of how you look at it, this series is on my top recommendations list for Western series involving Japan right now. In fact, I plan to rewatch it again soon. It's right up there with the new Shogun series. It's really that good. Both involve intrigue, political and real, warfare, and the inner workings of clashing cultures with a general focus on affecting the fate of Japan in one way or another. For more reviews on this show, other shows, and Japanese culture in general, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thanks as always for your time. Later.